Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Hope you've all been doing well. In this video, I wanted to show you guys some benchmarks I conducted on Windows 10's new 1903 update. I'm a bit late to the party in regards to this topic, but when real life gets in the way, you can't really help it, unfortunately. But I finally got around to doing the update, and I was curious about its impacts on a first-gen Ryzen system, as I had heard it had made many positive impacts on gaming scenarios and synthetic benchmarks. The 1903 update supposedly has scheduler optimizations included in it to make the operating system CCX aware. These optimizations and tweaks are beneficial to Ryzen CPUs as they use multiple CCXs with multiple cores in them. I won't really go through a whole in-depth explanation on what the scheduler tweaks do, as I've already covered them in a previous video, so instead, we'll get things started by going over the test system. For the CPU, we've got a Ryzen 7 1800X, which I've overclocked to 4GHz, and it's cooled by a Noctua NHD15. And the CPU is paired with 16GB of G-Scale Trident Z memory clocked at 3333MHz that has CL14 tuned timings. The motherboard is the Gigabyte Aorus X370 Gaming 5, and the graphics card we're using is the EVGA GTX 1080 Ti Black Edition, which I've also overclocked as well by adding a plus 100 offset to the core, and plus 300 to the memory. Powering all the components is an EVGA 750G2 power supply, and the case we're using is the Corsair Air 740, providing lots of airflow for our components. I have also installed the latest drivers from NVIDIA and also the chipset drivers from AMD which were released on the 17th of June. For full system specifications, you guys can check the video description down below. So now that we've gone through the system specs, let's jump into the benchmarks. To start off, we'll be taking a look at some gaming benchmarks. Starting things off will be Shadow of the Tomb Raider. For the settings, and this goes for all titles by the way, I tested at 1080p with a low preset so as to not incur a GPU bottleneck, and if the DX12 API was available, then that is what I used. And as you guys can see for this title, there's pretty much no difference in regards to performance for the average and 1% frame charm results. Although we did see a dip in the 0.1 lows for the new 1903 update. But other than that, really not a huge difference at all. And as we go through the other benchmark results, you'll see this as a recurring theme. Assassin's Creed Odyssey shows no difference at all, for the measured average FPS and frame time minimums. Usually when I'm showcasing benchmark results, I discuss the results with you guys, point out noteworthy changes and differences. However, for these results, there's really not a whole lot to discuss, since there were hardly any improvements that I noticed on my system, so unfortunately, I can't really tell you guys anything more than that. Pretty much all of our gaming benchmarks results tell us that the 1809 version and the 1903 update, performance hasn't really been impacted at all. But let's move on to a few synthetic benchmarks. First up is Cinebench R20, and just like our gaming benchmark results, there's not a huge difference between our 1809 and 1903 results. The single core score barely moved, while the multi-core score showed an increase of 0.2%. So there's a very slight change, but this is also pretty much margin of error stuff. So let's move on. Up next is 3D Mark Fire Strike Ultra, and here we see a 4% improvement for the physics score, where the 1809 version had a score of 21,135, and our 1903 update score was 21,951. Not a huge difference, but let's see if things change with 3D Mark Time Spy. And yeah, no significant change here either. Just another result where they are pretty much neck and neck. There you guys have it, judging from all these results, I can say that the 1903 update hasn't really changed anything at all. But since I was doing the update, I thought, you know what, I might as well do, do some testing and share them with you guys. I wish it really was a more interesting video than that, but those are the results I got. Anyway, I am in the midst of actually preparing and doing a lot more testing for my Ryzen 9 3900X upgrade. It looks like Canada got the shaft with pretty much all the retailers having little to no stock, so there will be a little bit of a delay. But nonetheless, this gives me more time to prepare and it does look like there are some issues ongoing with early BIOS updates and things like that. So hopefully that's all sorted out and it's not too long of a wait though, as I am really excited to getting a new Zen 2 chip in my hands and want to really play around with it. So definitely stay tuned for that, there will be a lot of benchmarks and videos I will be sharing with you guys. I hope you guys found this video to be more enjoyable than I did. If you guys did, then leave a like. If you didn't, then dislike it. Leave your thoughts down below, check out the video description for my other videos and ways to support the channel. And if you guys are interested in more content like this, then make sure you're subscribed. Thanks for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.